Hi, I'm Pat Galanfi, and this is Attention Central Texas. Welcome today. I've got such a wonderful, wonderful friend. I've called her my friend because I was able to interview her uh, just last year, and it was just a blessing, and I'm so glad we get to do it again. Her name is Doris Fortson, and she and her husband um, are with a ministry that they themselves began called Nama, Nama Village, correct? Nama Village. Well, welcome, Doris. Thank I just you. want you to just tell us all about Name a Village. <laughs> I happen to have a brochure, and I'm just amazed at all the things that y'all are accomplishing. So where is Name a Village, and how did you actually start into going to Africa? <laughs> Michael and I um, graduated from college in, well, Michael graduated in 1965, and he went on a short-term mission. Uh, to Tanzania, East Africa, uh -huh. fell in love with Africa, fell in love with the people, uh, the work of God there, um, and came home and we got married and went back. Wow. Uh, so we lived there six years, had two children there, uh, went over with a three-month-old, and I always knew that we would be back mm. uh, sometime. We came home to get our kids educated, um, just didn't know how, and um, when we retired in 2000. Okay. I Bump went with. over for a trip uh, to show our uh, two kids who were born there where they were born. Right. And began to see orphans and mm. um, that weren't there in the 60s uh, because AIDS was not there in right. the 60s. That didn't start heavy until the 70s. Um, but our son who was with us and who was born there kept saying, Mom, uh, you guys can do something. You're retired. You have a business that supports you that you don't have to watch. and." Um, he said, you, you need to come back. We still speak the language. We still happen to love the food. Wow. Um, and so we came back. I went back to um, Arusha to try to see how we could help. Realized that babies, uh, abandoned and orphan babies. Mm. Um, that's what we told God that we would do. You know how, how that goes sometimes. Uh -huh. God, <laughs> let, let us just do this we'll one. We'll do this one little part. <laughs> one thing, and then God just comes in and and it's almost like he says, if, if you'll do that, then I think I can make that bigger. Oh, wow. And so after working with abandoned babies uh, for probably two years, uh, fell in love with those little ones. Um, sure. Just loved that whole ministry of rescuing those babies. Uh, over 13 years, we've probably had about 450 babies in. Wow. All abandoned, orphaned, or at risk. Uh, the at risk are like... Um, blind, mm -hmm. uh, spina bifida. We have the most gorgeous little spina bifida baby uh, that knows her colors. It is so cute. Um, but we began to realize they weren't the problem. Mm. Uh, women who are poor and desperate. Right. At first I said they were the problem. Um, after I've dealt with so many women uh, there and I know how they are desperate to feed their children yes. and desperate to send their kids to school, mm -hmm. uh, I realized women aren't the problem. They're the solution. And so we started a program called MAP, uh, Mothers Against Poverty. Praise God. <laughs> I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, I love this ministry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I love what God is doing with it. Um, it is really not I uh, or Michael that do this work. Um, we are just two old people that are trying to get <laughs> God to <laughs> tell us which way he wants us to go. But we started this program for women. Um, uh, and it's a program where we bring, we bring them in, uh, many times off the street. Wow. Um, these women are abused and abandoned. Uh, I can't even tell people the stories that these women uh, have gone through. I tell people all the time, the baby stories are hard enough. Right. You know, uh, these babies who've been abandoned in pits and latrines and on the roadside, uh, then you come to these women mm -hmm. uh, who've been abused and kicked out and marginalized in their society. Yeah, we don't, we can't even comprehend um, that many, many so times. So I just, um, I love these women. We've set, uh, at, at this point, about 135 women up in small business. They do have to come into the center first. We right. built a new mothering center uh, that just opened last February. Praise God. Where these women come in, they have all kinds of classes. Uh, reading and writing. Some of them don't know how to read or write. Um, they have business classes. How would you run a business? You know, you got to put money back for product and, you know, wow. I keep your records straight. Um, sewing. Sewing is a big thing. 
uh, and th there's more to just the and they're treadle sewing machines. So we have a big room with with sewing machines. How kind of, oh, that's and it's awesome. not just the fact that they're sewing; it's mm -hmm. they're with other women, right? Who are sewing, and that um, being with other women who've been beaten down like you have, mm -hmm. uh, that's the beginning of the healing, right? Uh, that we offer there. We have group therapy, a Bible-based group therapy for them twice a week. Uh, they have Bible class every night before they go to bed, uh, asking God to be with them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it changes their whole life. Of course. Uh, when we go and interview a woman, she is usually so downcast, uh, she can't even look up. She's mm -hmm. so ashamed of what's happened to her. Um, and then after just a few weeks at Nama Village and, and us telling him them, you know, this is not what God wanted yeah. for you. Telling God wanted an abundant are life for you. Yeah. He wanted a better life for you. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of get their head on straight before we can start talking about a business. Yeah. Um, but once they latch on to that, um, that they can make it yes. in life. And we have um, used clothing businesses, um, chicken and egg businesses, <laughs> um, vegetable stands, charcoal stands, uh, earring making business, oh, clothes wow. making business. Uh, we had a young mom come in from a Maasai village, 15 years old. Uh, she had a baby about six months old. She had been burned at age seven in the cooking fire in the middle of the mm. floor burned from here down, scarred tremendously. Her breasts were gone. She couldn't nurse her baby. The mm. baby was almost gone. And uh, she really came in for us to take the baby. And we right. said, no, why don't you stay with us too? And she is still there today. She's okay. working on a business, but her little hands were all burned and mm. she's lost some of her fingers. But she's learned how to sew on a treadle sewing machine and she uh, made Michael and I some outfits uh, oh. that I hope you get to see. They're, they're, so, they're not exactly my color or <laughs> Michael's style, uh, but we're wearing them. <laughs> of course you are, yeah. Uh, you're, yeah. Give, you're giving these more, even more than just uh, knowledge. You're, it sounds like you're giving them hope. Absolutely. And that's really, uh, if you have hope, oh. then you can, uh, you can just continue to, yeah. to just lean on God and let Him yeah. help you. You know, I'm sure even as you're talking, people's hearts are being being pricked. Um, and I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to tell them, if we want to come alongside you, who knows, we may want to take a trip. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, how do we contact you and Michael and, uh, and, and be, become a part of what you're doing? Okay, we have a website with our email there, uh, but uh, yeah, it's easy to reach us. Um, when we're there, of course, you can't call us. <laughs> uh, but you can always email, uh, and I'm doris.fortson at yahoo.com. So okay. easy reach. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I love to tell people, get involved. Mm -hmm. God is busy out there. There's so much good work. We're not the only good work. Sure. I tell people we're, we're about the most precious work there is, but we're, God yeah. is busy Mothers and all babies. over. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, just get out there. There's no reason for anyone to sit at home uh, and do nothing. God Absolutely. is so busy out there. Just get involved. Um, I love to tell people, if you are a Christ follower, do something in your life sometime exactly. that requires a gospel explanation. Mm. This is it for us. There is no way. Michael is 81 and I'm 80 years old. Wow. There is no way that we could be doing the projects that we're doing. Water well drilling now, uh, a daycare for handicapped babies mm. that God wanted us Amazing. to start. Now we've, we've repented and are trying to reach the men. Wow. I have thought all along the men were the problem there. <laughs> they they need so much. They, they leave their homes because they can't support their women. Mm -hmm. uh, they go to town. They leave the village and go to town so they can find a job and they never come home. Wow. Um, you know, we've got to reach the men. Uh, and so we started conferences for men, mm. people from here come over and teach a men's conference. Uh, it is a, it's the most beautiful thing. Amazing. Kim said, Mom, uh, my heart was broken for it, two Saturdays ago when we did our first women's com uh, men's conference. Mm -hmm. uh, she said there were 114 men. Praise God. That came the first time. Uh, they were 
crying. They were meeting in groups, studying scriptures, uh, and, and trying to learn how to be the man that God wants them to be. Wonderful. Um, but do something that requires that gospel mm -hmm, explanation mm -hmm. that people look at you and say, how did you do that? Yeah, yeah. You're, just a, you're just one person. How did you do that? And you say, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have no idea mm -hmm. because God is in control of this. Uh, we gave this to God a long time ago. If you want it to fly, God, it's yours. You let yeah. it fly. Um, Michael and I work for free. Everyone who comes over works for free. Uh, they're all volunteers, all of us. Um, mm -hmm. But and we've had uh, last year we had 256 volunteers come from all over the world, mm -hmm. from Belgium, from Spain, from England, from uh, Australia. And sometimes these kids don't know who Jesus is. Right. They just want to work in Africa but with they babies. do when and they, so they leave. sign up and then they come yeah. and they hear us saying a prayer and they hear us giving God all the glory mm -hmm. uh, for this and they're kind of like, what? What is this about? Yeah. And I love to tell people, I think that scripture in Matthew where uh, Jesus said, go out into all the world. Right. I think he's telling name a village, you stay right there mm. and I'll send the world to you. Wow, yeah. And we just, yeah. we have people coming. Oh, <laughs> praise God. All the time. Well, I, I love, <laughs> uh, any time one of my more mature sisters talks about not being too old. Uh, I mean, I absolutely agree. And I just encourage people as they've heard you speak and heard you share from your heart tonight, <laughs> that, that they would be able to understand that there is a world out there that needs us no matter what our age right. is. We are told to go and preach the gospel right. to all creatures. And Absolutely. so whether it's at Walmart or in Africa, <laughs> where it's a command. So we need to be Absolutely. doing it no be matter how there. young or how old we are. And right. I appreciate so much what you're doing and your faithfulness and your willingness to basically lay down your life for the gospel, which is what you're doing. And uh, and I just want to let you know, I appreciate it. And you're a blessing to the body of Christ. Thank so, you. And I know you have appreciated all the words that she has spoken today. It's been a joy. And I just want to encourage you to contact her and become a part of what she is doing and her husband and what God is doing in the name of Jesus. So have a blessed day. We'll see you again soon.